Fresh. That, that's the secret ingredient for, to the video. It is. is Rex going in fresh? I'm going fresh. That's why you had yet to have cherry pie. That kind of unfresh thinking. Well, actually, it turns out, well, we'll talk about that, but I want you to be fresh for it. Good, good. Keep trying to have these conversations with me before the good camera's run. Like, Shut the hey, hell up. You're the one that brought it up. This is top shelf content. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Welcome to Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex, and ooh, it's got a bag. Yeah, who do you think in this bottle shape would do something super fancy? Just, Matt. what brand? Oh, uh, golly. Well, it's gonna be an American whiskey. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's not gonna be the makers. I mean, I'm getting like the color is kind of like a wild turkey thing. It's not. It's not a wild turkey thing. Maybe you like- You should know it just from the Basil bottle. Hayden, Basil Hayden usually does like the paper thing. You should know it just from the bottle shape. Okay. In the package even. What am I looking at? Westland. Oh, Westland. They always have the same bottles? Yeah. I thought, wait a minute. The design is always different. No, I thought it's like it's more of a wine bottle type of no. deal. Really? No, you're thinking of Stranahan's. Am I thinking of Stranahan's? Stranahan's, I don't know where it is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> my wandering skills. I mean, it not, it's not all of them, but all of their core releases are like my, this. My like navigation some of their special edition ones low. are more Scottish style bottles. All right. Okay, so Good. this is from Patrick Cohn, the Titan. Oh, yes, Daniel, oh, in the distance, do you hear that? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, it's a rumbling. Yes, once again. A magnificence. Could it be? Some bastards. No! <laughs> okay, this is a partnership that they did with a clothing company. Hence the fabric called Filson. Okay. Now Filson, there's your blue Westland top. Yeah. Filson started as a company that was outfitting like the gold gold foot whiskey. It says. Yeah. The. Cold foot. Cold foot whiskey, it says. Filson started as a company that was outfitting the dudes who were heading up to Alaska to try to get rich off of gold. Uh, gold now, foot whiskey, it says. Yeah, now the uh, they're based in Seattle, which is also Westland, right? Yeah. And uh, they sort of decided to do a release together. So it's a tribute, they say, to the dudes who went up to Alaska and stuck it out. Yeah, well, it's hardy and tough. It has like this, this like a multi rustic quality to it, and <laughs> I I think maybe that story is is projecting me down this uh, path of Alaska and burlap bags and right dust. But and there is this, um, it's like this. It's not earthy. I don't want to say earthy. I don't want to say smoky. But it's in that direction. In addition to the multi sweetness, it's in that direction of something that comes across as a little bit more. Yeah. It smells like a gold miner. Well, I mean, with a hint of, uh, yeah. with a hint of pack mule, and a slight tasting of a dog sled. Did you get the same thing? I did? And <laughs> so you, his like name a, is. I think I'm getting more of a forest floor on this nose. I think that's what it is, like a forest floor, maltiness and forest floor. Maybe some. 
But again, so the main thing is the sweetness. Let's talk about the sweetness. There is a sweet character to this nose. I'm picking out the, I'm picking apart the edges of this thing. I'm looking for that classic uh, Westland chocolate note, and it's, it's sort of buried back there, but it's so buried, yeah. it's way behind like malt must I'm and honey and a little bit of sherry. I'm not getting that at all so far, possibly because I had coffee too, it was too close to the shoot. I usually don't have it nearly as close to the shoot as I did, but I was drinking coffee like 15 minutes ago. This is more classic, like Scottish notes, like malty, musty, yeah, that's the main, honey, that's butterscotch. That's the main thing. But underneath that, there's like this, um, I want to say like a wood cabin, it, Silver Dollar City takes me back to the Ozarks, that kind of, you know, wood building, rustic quality of everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, to all of the things you're saying about the, the, the sweeter Scottish um, notes. Those are the main notes, but again, the edges are oh. what really drawing me in here. A little bit of wood and campfire on the uh, on the end of the palate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It it's all up, in the palate. It shows up, shows up way more on the taste than on the nose. On the nose, it kept grabbing my attention because that's the unique bit. I've smelled this, you know, sweet, malty, honey, scotchy um, nose many, many times before. But the interesting bit was the edges of the nose, and then on the taste, exactly, it's like a campfire. Man, it's this, like, um, this, here's the thing, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm not necessarily a big fan of combined marketing things and stuff like that, right? If it's However, done, if, like, if it's done well, if it mm -hmm. makes sense, and then, it's fine, sure, why not? It's a themed release. It's got the burlap bag that they, or not the burlap, but the I think canvas bag they probably made for them. More often than not, it's kind of ham-fisted. This though, I it, think- It doesn't a, feel ham-fisted. I think there's enough justification to have that. I get it, they're yeah. two locals. I, I would love to do something with local companies, so I don't have any problem in the marketing. Yeah. But I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I'm gonna go get the classic Westland right now, mm -hmm. because this might have just become, to me, one of the most classic malt flavors I've ever tasted from Westland, as in like, maybe this should be Coraline introduction to their lightly smoky malt. Like this would be up there with like Deanston 12 and any like core range Glenmorangie or Glenfiddich classic number. Right. Like it's just right down home plate. You know the way we talk about bourbons being like, oh yeah, aim for right down the middle of home plate bourbon. Yeah, yeah. This is right down the middle of home plate single malt. If that's the scene that you're familiar with, that you're comfortable with. Yeah. Then, yeah, that would be an easy body. Like uh, way more than two. any Westland I've ever had. Two. I would agree. Um, the personal preference though, the Westland note that I talk about every time Westland comes up is that kind of that nuttiness, that coffee note. Mm -hmm. I do find it in this, but just barely. It's way in the back, and it's one of my favorite notes in all of whiskey. But in this, it's barely there. So to your point that it's going to be a good transitionary bottle, a good introductory bottle for yeah. people, people coming from that end of the spectrum. Yes, but for me personally, I like the stuff they were doing that really enhances that. Uh, you got the peated. That really enhances that nutty note. Yeah, this is more peaty. Yeah. But it's also more nutty. Here, I'm going to give you a run. It's also more nutty. Mm -hmm. So... If I was going to introduce people to Westland, I would introduce them to the classic sherry cask, the normal release, and the peated release. If I was going to introduce people to malt whiskey in America who have only ever had scotch, right. I might try to track this down and pour it for them and go like, yeah, you realize that's not actually from Scotland. That's from Seattle. Oh, oh there it is. Dude. I know. So but Again, I agree. It's not my preferred Westland. Right. But this is so... Well, Classic. The peated Westland, though. Mm -hmm. Like two of my favorite notes, the nuttiness, that coffee note. And the smoke. And then the peat. And then I was like, well, maybe those are two too different. They're not going to play well together. In that bottle, I think it works. There's way more floral. Oh. I, I keep coming back to like the Deanston category of Highland Scotch. And this one just really... Having a sip of the peated Westland. Hits it out of the park. Having, the, uh, having a sip of the peated Westland really opened up the nose on both of these. It's wow. five years old. Okay. Mm. I, I really like that. Yeah. Now, we, we've said many times before, we like the hell out of what Westland's yeah, doing. We already know we do, but still. Dakota Hampton, why do you think that American distilleries care about yeast strains more than Scottish distilleries? It's confusing to me that bourbon makers, a category with a smaller range of flavors, care so much more about what yeast they use compared to single malt. 
Do Scottish distilleries protect strains? Because it seems to me they almost treat yeast as a zero factor. Okay, so this is a little bit complicated, but for once we're gonna get some nerd whiskey nerd answers. For once? For once. Really? Normally is skip that, the whiskey is nerd that what answers. you see happening on this channel? This on a is nothing. Basis? Yeah, this is nothing like what you're about to get. <laughs> I think what it comes down to is if you study the history of Scottish whiskey, uh, there's all this constant growth and collapse and growth and collapse and then the weight falls to the big producers who are mostly interested in scale and the volume that they can create. Um, and then that sort of bleeds back into a lot of the malt distilleries. And they essentially narrow it down to where right now, almost everybody in Scotland is using a variation of the M series of a specific kind of distiller's yeast. And that's all of them. And they focused all their energy on differentiating their product on length of fermentation and barrel and cask use. Right. Whereas Americans have never gone through that pattern. And a lot of them are coming from beer backgrounds where yeast is everything. Okay. And so in America, they've said, well, all we have is grain, yeast, and water. Let's do what we can with all three of those things. Right. And so they dive into all the yeast variations. Scotland tends to focus more on fermentation all the way through the aging of the product. That's changing though. I've heard that some Scottish distilleries are starting to experiment with various yeast strains. That was exactly my next question. Because, it's coming full circle. Because um, like the, the, the Scotlands and the Irelands and the places that have been doing whiskey for a super long time, mm -hmm. um, it's really easy to get uh, bogged down in tradition. And this mm -hmm. is the way that it's done. It's one of the reasons why we absolutely adore what uh, Middleton is doing with me the Method and Madness line. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in Scotch, what I hear you saying is that uh, they've narrowed down the yeast that really, this is what's working for us. This delivers an amazing it's result. It's prime, but, a lot of product. Pro but if they were to tr innovate Deal. and experiment, that's going to be one of the biggest factors that they could mix things up and see what happens. Yeah, that is a factor for sure. Okay. I don't know if it's one of the biggest. I think Method Madness is doing even more with barrel aging oh, yeah. than you would get from a On yeast Irish, change. On the Irish side of things. But right. even in Ireland, you know, Teeling is experimenting with yeast and stuff. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, but, it's come, uh, it's, it's, Teeling, I, be prepared I to see that. Correctly, the master distiller came from a beer background. Mm -hmm. So he knows his from way the around. the Pacific Northwest. He knows his way around east. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Rollins, I just went back and watched episodes one through ten. So fun to see the difference. What the F happened, Rex? Ha. <laughs> it's quality, man. <laughs> quality happened. All up in your face. All the quality. Just, we went, we went. Episode, 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 quality. As is currently being demonstrated yet again. So you just gotta prime the pump, and then eventually you hit that, you hit that rhythm, pop, 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 and then an explosion of quality. That's what happened. And this is why I had rarely to, hear nerd things. I had things. to compensate, because you just nerdgasmed <laughs> right in front of everybody. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I just answered a question. Point camera. I just answered a question. Everybody. And I had to fix it. I had to drop back, make it okay. Oh, Lord. This is what I did. You're fighting, stealing. <laughs> if you fight me, oof, that's good. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's life. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us. us.